Good morning. Welcome. We'll just start off by going around the circle and introducing ourselves and let me know if there's any part of your being that would like some extra attention this morning or if any part is particularly sore. Once again, if there's anything that we do in class you don't feel like doing or it, uh, it's a little bit painful when you do, just do what your body asks of you. Um, and if you want to just lie down on your back and relax, that's good too. I promise I won't do that. So we're just going to begin by finding a nice comfortable seating position. You can sit cross-legged if you want. You can uh, sit on your knees. Just feel yourself rooting down into the mat, feel your sitting bones pressing into the mat. You may wish to just close your eyes. Feel yourself growing tall as your sitting bones are rooting down, your spine is moving upward, the crown of your head is moving toward the ceiling. See if you can keep your chin parallel to the floor. You can place your palms on your knees. You can turn your palms down toward your knees, and this is said in yoga to bring your awareness and your energy inside your body. If you feel this morning like you would like to extend and spread your energy out into the larger world, it's suggested that you just flip your palms and place the backs of your hands on your knees so that your energy is moving outward. It's kind of nice to share energy with each other in the room. So we're just going to begin by a little bit of breathing exercises begin to relax and begin to engage the parasympathetic nervous system. So this morning I thought instead of focusing on the breath, that what we would focus on is kind of a mental mantra. So we're going to get a little bit of a mantra going in our own heads. You don't have to repeat it out loud. Just try to get a phrase going in your head. And we're going to not use Sanskrit this morning, but we're going to use uh, an English word, relax. And I'm going to attempt to teach this as I learned it from a man named Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. So we're going to start with inhale, a very short inhale. And to the inhale, we're going to mentally intone re. And then we're going to extend our exhale twice as long as the inhale, saying lax. So we'll inhale re, lax. Re, lax. Gently open your eyes. Bring your palms together. <coughs> Rub your palms. And generate a little bit of heat and energy out of it. Just cup your palms over your eyes and your face. Feel the heat and energy moving from your hands into the skin of your face, softening the muscles around the eyes, cheeks, jaw. Feel the energy from the face moving into the fingertips, down the forearms. And then just 
bring your hands again to the front. Turn your little bit of more energy to your feet. And then just take your warm palms and just place them around your neck. And bring your awareness to the muscles that circle around the neck. Feel the jaw soften. Release your arms, bring your arms out to your side, turn the palms up. I'm going to inhale, look to the thumbs, bring the palms together, and then pull down the energy to the top of the head, and then just let the palms relax onto the top. Feel your crown pushing up into your palms, palms gently resting. Seventh chakra, your crown chakra. And then release your hands. Take your two fingers and just begin to very gently massage the temples. Try to keep your jaw relaxed. And then take your two fingers to the inside of your eyebrow and then make a circle, just pressing lightly around and up, around the sides of your eyes. Just pressing. So these muscles around the eyes in the jaw or some of the places where we carry a lot of tension. Clench your jaw and get a sore back. And then take your two fingers and just rub, massage around your cheeks. You can use the whole palm of your hand, all of your fingers, down the jawline. Just rubbing anywhere in your face, but on the sides of your nose. And then just take your fingertips and tap at all the nerves. and just take a deep breath and feel all the gentle tingling in your face. Now we're going to work just a little bit on relaxing the neck, but before we relax the neck, we're going to do a little bit of detoxification of the lymphatic system. There's three lymph glands that run down the neck. So the way we're going to uh, move the lymph fluid is we're, first of all, I'll show you where the lymph glands are make a face and you can do this as well. First of all, I'm going to go like this and you're going to see the scaling muscles in the neck and right behind them you can see kind of a little soft part. So if you do that yourself and just put your fingers on that kind of soft tender part, now we're accessing the lymphatic system. So what we're going to do is just gently massage by just stroking down the neck toward like this. Helping to move any toxins that have gathered in the face and neck. And then you can also stroke down the side toward the shoulders. And you can put a fair amount of pressure, don't hurt yourself. But... And then sort of down. Take palm of one hand and just drape it over your head and very gently, keeping this shoulder relaxed, just guide your head toward 
relaxing along the side. Inhale, exhale. See if you can keep your jaw relaxed. Cheeks relaxed. And then bring your head up. Shrug the shoulders up and around. You should feel kind of a nice little release in the back of the neck. And then go in the opposite direction, forward and Put your hands by your hips. We'll just bring one arm up and slide this one and just very gently tip over to the side. See if you can keep your sitting bones rooted on the mat and then slide back. And as you slide over and out, just feel your head growing very heavy and tipping over to the side with the weight of gravity. Relax. And then back. And then we'll come to standing. <clears throat> so we're going to uh, do a three-part breath. We're going to inhale with one big swoop down. We're going to go and then we're going to, sorry, we're going to inhale and then exhale. So last week we talked a little bit in class about releasing pain across the back of the shoulders and across the back of the back by opening and lengthening through the, the chest. So often when these muscles in the front of the chest are tight, we're pulled forward, we get sore shoulders and sore back. So the way we're going to do this release is by interlacing our fingers behind our back and, and uh, releasing that way. So we're going to do it a little bit differently than normally. So um, we'll start by just taking your hands to your side. We'll inhale the arms up, interlace the fingers, flip the palms toward the ceiling, and then press up toward the ceiling with the palms. At the same time, imagine that your body is pressing down into the mat as well. So your feet are pressing down, arms are lifting up, spine is stretching and then let go of your fingers. To interlace our fingers behind our back and make sure that we're working muscles across here. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our arms behind our back, interlace the palms, interlace the fingers and open the palms out so that they're flat. Make sure that your shoulders are in the same plane so that both shoulders are even and one isn't up higher than the other. Pull just lightly on your fingers so you're stretching your fingers apart. Bring your elbows towards each other. Keep your elbows bent. And you'll feel that this stretch is across underneath the collarbones. And then just very gently Straighten the arms. And then bring the arms back in toward the body. And then very gently straighten again. Feel your crown lifting toward the ceiling. Your chin is parallel to the floor. And then bring your arms back toward the body. 
and once more inhale. Try to bring your elbows towards each other. See if you can feel your collarbones spreading. You really call it having a collarbone smile. And then relax. Let go of your hands. Shake. And then we'll just roll our shoulders forward. Imagine that we're, you're standing, imagine that you're standing right in the center of a clock dial. So in front of you is 12 o'clock, 3, 6, 9, 1, 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to move around the face of the clock um, about five or six times on one side and then switch to the other side. So do, we'll do it at your own pace. So what we're going to do basically is bend the knees. And then take the right leg and point the right toe out at 12 o'clock. And then slide it in. And then point it at 1 o'clock. Slide it in. And go all the way around the clock face. So that you're sliding your foot. And then you may have to twist around your own leg. And just go around about five more times. And you'll see this is not only bending and flexing your knee through its full range of motion, but you're also working a little bit. So just bend your knees, and then we're just imagining that this foot is moving around the clock. So we'll have one o'clock, back, two o'clock. If the clock is complicated, imagine it's a compass, <laughs> compass point. And then after you've gone around, switch to the other side. And we'll just take a second to welcome Faisa to the class and 
But Issa yeah. was in the class from the very first class we started here two years ago, so it's really nice that she's able to come back. So now we're going to uh, do a balance pose for today, Baxter Bell's balance pose. And this pose is called the zigzag. So what we're going to do is take the strap, lay the strap down the center of the mat. Some people who do this particular movement find it really easy. For some people, it's a really big balance challenge. So, Give it a whirl. So what we're going to do is start by standing on the left side of the mat. And we're going to walk zigzag to the end of the mat and back. So we're going to start off by taking the left foot, crossing it over, and then taking the right foot, crossing it over. Walk all the way to the end of the mat. Don't touch the strap. If you touch the strap, move your foot so you're not touching the strap. And then when you get to the end of the mat, go backwards without looking. Use your feet. It's really good not only at balance, but also at proprioception, at figuring out where our body is in space. And then when you're done, step to the other side of the mat. And this time, keep your eyes looking in the distance in front of you and just feel your way with your feet. So. So if you've ever watched a young child, a young baby, learning to move to the toddler stage, one of the most difficult things for children to negotiate is that part when you're walking when you're only standing on one foot. So kids usually end up sitting down a few times, and then back. Side. We'll use it a little bit later, so we can just keep it to the side. And we're going to come down to sitting on the mat, so you can come down any way you want. If you like, you can come down to Utkatasana. So we're going to work a little bit on our knees. The patella, the kneecap, moves in a groove along the femur. So if you put your hands on your kneecaps, kind of, you can see that they'll wiggle and jiggle all around. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our kneecaps using these two muscles in the front of the thigh. Flex your feet. Just keep your hands lightly on your kneecaps to feel this. Don't press your back of your knees down into the mat. Just keep the knees in a nice little curve. Take your awareness to the two long muscles, one on the outer side, one on the inside of the and pull those muscles up. Can tighten them up. Feel the kneecap. And then release. Pull up and hold. And then release. Again, pull up. And release. 
and then pull the kneecap up. Release. And once more, pull the kneecap up. And release. And then just take your fingers and stimulate the muscles on that one leg. And then take the other side. Put your hand lightly on your kneecap to see if it's moving. Begin to focus your awareness on the muscles on the top of the thigh. Tighten them, pull them up, pulling the kneecap up. See if you can keep the lower leg relaxed as you're doing this. And then release. Tighten. Place your hands behind your back. You can put your fingers pointing toward the back wall behind you, or you can turn your fingers in, or if it hurts your shoulders, turn your fingers out to the sides. We'll just point the toes, point the feet, and then flex the toes up and point. Flex the toes up. Now press into the heels and just let your pelvis lift slightly. And then relax down. Take your mat at the end and roll it up. About two-thirds to three-quarters so that you have So what we're doing is we're using the rolled mat to put the knee in a little bit of an extension so that we can work a little bit deeper on those vastus medialis muscles we're working. So you can take your left knee and just bend it up to a comfortable position. If you want to place your arms around it to hold on, that's fine too. Good to inhale, flex the foot and just lift. Bring your awareness to the thigh muscles. Relax. Bring your awareness to the thigh muscles. Tighten the thigh muscles and see how the knee and the foot lifts and down. So repeat this six times at your own pace. Bringing your awareness inside. Actually feeling the Six repetitions. Bend your knee. Straighten the other leg. And go through the same thing on the other side. Bringing your awareness to the upper thigh muscles. Pull those muscles. Cancel. Feel the knee lift. Foot lift. Hold and then release. Against the 
be fairly close. doing any kind of movements, if you can keep your foot flexed, it offers a lot of protection and keeps the knee in that track. And then come a little bit closer to the edge of your chair. And lift your toes up. Only your big toes. Your other toes down. Keep the big toe on the ground and lift your other four toes. Down. And then lift all your toes and then put them down one at a time, beginning with the big toe. ball of your foot pressing into the ground. So you're just lifting your toes and you might feel as you lift your toes like this, you can actually feel put your hands on your thighs, you can actually feel the upper thigh muscles moving. So we really are connected to the zipper toes. So last week I, um, there's a lucky word here, I had this kind of a, a strenuous uh, upward facing plank pose that was really, uh, required a lot of upper body strength. So we're going to build up to that upward facing plank by strengthening, and what we're strengthening is across this part of the chest, which are muscles that we don't very often use, when we work like this, so if we can expand this at really helps with sore shoulders and back. So take your hands and place them on the chair. Let the fingers drape over the edge so we're putting our shoulders and upper arms into an elbow rotation. <laughs> take a deep inhale, press the chin slightly down toward the chest and lift the chest up. Hold. Breathe deeply, feel the arch across the inner back spreading across the shoulders. Try to pull your elbows in towards each other. Elbows are pointing to the back. And then release. Come forward. Just keep your hands 
shake. Once more, put your hands straight over. Inhale, dip the head. Lift the chest. And if you like, you can just very gently drop the head backward. <coughs> closer to the edge, front edge of the chair. Once again, we're going to drape the hands and hold on. This time we're going to slide the hips off the chair. So we're being, I think this exercise came from physiotherapy actually, it's called a hip dip. So we're going to dip our hips down, bend the elbows straight toward the back, out the back. Break, just rest on the edge of the chair. Come forward again. Dip the hips, keep the elbows pointing to the back. You can go as low as you want. If you feel any pull, just back off a little. And then back. Once more, down. Dip the hips. And this time, as you come up, press into the feet. Lift hips, let the head tip gently back. And then if you feel comfortable, walk your feet forward. Arvotanasana, upward facing plank, one of the most difficult yoga poses. And then come back. Perfect. Sitting bones rooting into the chair. Take your left palm and put it on the outside of the right knee. Inhale, pull the spine up. Imagine that you're pulling a string. You're pulling your spine up. The more we can pull and separate the spine, the more space there is for us to gently press into the palm and turn. Take your hand down, place it on the back of the chair. Or just bring your hand back. And just breathe into the twist. And then we'll come back to center. Place the opposite palm. Imagine that you've got a string, you're pulling. Separate the vertebrae and then take a hand. Gently twist to the other side. And then come back to center. Just take a moment to feel the energy moving through the body. Just close your eyes and your eyes. Stand up. Turn around and face the chair. We're going to do grip 
the seat of the chair with the same fingers draping over so that we're putting our shoulders and upper arms into a nice outward rotation. Let your chest, kind of your heart, sink between your upper arms and then slowly walk your feet back. Letting your head drop until you're getting a nice stretch across the back and down the back of your knees into a nice, relaxed, supported downward facing dog. You can nod your head, yes. Nod your head, no. Kind of traction around the neck. And then when you're ready, inhale. Lift the head and gently walk the feet. Stand, and then come back to the mat. So gently make sure that your strap is somewhere where you can grab it with your hands. And we're just going to roll onto the back. Pull your knees, bend your knees and pull your ankles till they're fairly close to your body, but still in a comfortable position. Then we're going to inhale and we're going to bring the right leg up toward the ceiling with the foot flexed. We're going to turn the foot outward. Bend the knee so that the right leg is in sort of a figure four shape. This is called a window stretch. Place your left palm on your left hip so that you're making sure that, like on your hip bone, so that you're making sure that your sitting bones are staying rooted in the mat. And then take your right palm, place it on right knee and just very gently open the knee toward the opposite wall. So we're relaxing the hip flexors, relaxing very deep gluteal muscles, which of course is going to relax the muscles that are often responsible for lower back pain. We're going to hold this pose for a minute. So feel the back of your body pressing into the mat. Feel the back of your heart broadening and spreading across the mat. Feel how that from the midline your body spreads out from side to side, occupying space on the mat. Bring your awareness to the hip flexor in the bent knee and leg. And breathe into your hip area. Take both arms down to the sides of your body. Bring your bent knee straight up into the air with the foot flexed and just give yourself a shake, releasing the muscles that we've just worked. And then bring your leg down flat on the mat and roll your foot in and out a few times. It's releasing across the hip flexor. And then bend that knee up to standing, bring it quite close to your buttocks. Inhale the opposite leg up to the ceiling with the foot flexed. Turn the foot outward and then bend the knee. Other leg. While you're here, you could make a couple of little circles with your ankle. 
that feels comfortable. You can then place your right palm on your hip, making sure that your right hip stays rooted to the mat. And then, if, <coughs> excuse me, your left palm, just very gently open the knee outward, opening the hip flexor. Soften your jaw. See if you can soften the muscles around the eyes. Soften your cheeks and the muscles in your face. Feel the back of your body growing wide and spreading across the mat. Feel as if you're almost breathing in through the back of your body. And then release your arms down to the sides. Let your leg come straighten up. Give it a good shake. And then bring your leg down flat on the mat and roll your toes in and out so that your whole leg rolls in and out, releasing from the hip. And then bring both knees to standing so your feet are planted on the mat, your knees are pointing toward the ceiling. And then just gently let your knees rock from side to side. Just a little movement, feel a massage, press your lower back into the mat so that you can feel massage along the sacrum, and then bring your knees up to standing. Take the strap and I'm going to put the strap around the right leg just above the knee. and attach the strap to the back. The opposite knee. Take the leg without the strap and take it up to the ceiling with the foot flexed and turn it out and bend it down over the knee. Walk your hands down the strap as close to your knee as you and without lifting your head and shoulders from the mat, try to keep your upper body relaxed. 
and then inhale and bring your knees up towards your chest. The left knee is moving toward the left shoulder, and the right knee is opening to the side, opening the hip flexor. Like feel a pull in the piriformis muscle down the side of the knee, which is often responsible for back pain when it's tense and contracted. And we're just going to hold this breathing deeply into your hip. Slide your arms down so they're about at about a 30 degree angle out from your body. Slide both feet out straight. Have your feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Roll your toes in towards each other at the same time as you roll your palms toward the floor. And then roll the toes out and roll the palms up to the ceiling. Once more, roll your toes in toward each other, and then open arms up to the ceiling. If this is stressful on your lower back, just bend your knees. Just lightly roll your head, let your head roll from side to side. Try to just start the motion and then let gravity take the head from side to side. And then finally coming to stillness in the center, resting on the exit of Feel the places where your body is making contact with the mat. Bring your awareness to your feet. Feel the places on the back of the heel that are pressing into the mat. Feel how the tops of your feet and the ankles and the arches relax and sink down into the mat. Feel your heels resting stably, firmly. Let your awareness travel up the back of your legs to the places where your calves are touching the mat. Let the flesh around your lower leg bones become soft. Curve around the bones and sink down into the mat. Feel your knees gently resting the curve of the femur. Feel your upper thighs heavy 
sinking down into the mat. Feel the bones and the weight of the hips and the pelvis relax and sink into the mat. There's a slight little lift in the lower lumbar spine. With each breath, you can Feel yourself lifting gently from the mat and then sinking back down. Your upper torso and upper back is firmly pressed into the mat. Relax. This relaxation translates into the muscles across the front of the chest and the top of the body. Feel the relaxation moving from the shoulders into the shoulder blades, feel your upper back gently resting on the mat. Energy is moving all the way down your arms. Your arms are gently held and supported by the earth. The back of your head is resting gently on the mat. See if you can bring your gently in your mind with the inhale your V and with the exhale relax V relax Let go of the mantra, relax, and let your breaths begin to deepen. Take a nice deep inhale and feel the breath moving all the way down your body to the very tips of your toes. Begin to bring a little of movement to your toes. Wiggle your toes. Make little circles with your ankles. Get really adventuresome and move each toe one at a time. Feel the breath entering through your nostrils and traveling right down to the very tips of your fingers, down through your arms and shoulders. Bring a little movement to your fingertips. Wiggle your fingers, make little circles with your wrists. Bring a little bit of movement to your face. Scrunch your face up, move your lips around, move your jaw. See if you can open and close your eyes. See how many different parts of your face. Bring your feet closer together so that your big toes are touching one another. And on the next inhale, bend your knees and bring your knees up toward your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees. Give your knees a squeeze. A famous yoga hug. And just take a moment to feel a little bit of gratitude for the movement and the energy flowing through the body this morning. And then just very gently begin to rock from side to side, eventually rolling over on your right side, bending your right arm to make a little bit of a pillow for your head. Now with your head and neck remaining as relaxed as you can, so we're not going to use any muscles in the neck, press your hands into the floor and begin to lift yourself up into a sitting position. With your head and neck still bent forward and relaxed, and then let your head and neck come up.
So this morning we were standing by inhaling our arms up, turning the palms. Coming into Anjali Mudra, just take the tips of your thumbs and touch just above the sternum, pulling up on the skin, opening the heart, and then just bring your palms in front and turn to someone in the class or to everyone in the class and say, thank you for practicing. Thank you all for practicing with me this morning and have a lovely Sunday and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.